Hi everyone, my name is Nick, and this week's pine of the week is Monstera Peru. This is my favorite Monstera, and definitely one of my favorite aroids. Aroid meaning any plant that falls into the Araceae family of plants. And this plant, Monstera Peru, gets its name because it's native to Peru. How surprising. It actually often goes off a misnomer, Monstera carstenianum, which is not its true name, but um, I think because this plant doesn't really have a true name other than Monstera Peru, it's something that people often refer to it as, which I love that name, so it's kind of unfortunate that it's not its real name, so I wouldn't be mad at anybody for calling it that. This is a really easy plant to care for, if you can't tell from my overgrown plant that I have cut back on so many occasions. Uh, my favorite thing about this plant is the texture of the leaves. It is just so incredible. I don't think this plant really has a common name. I could be wrong. Actually, I think I'm wrong. I think some people call it like the Marble Planet Pothos, but I have seen so many weird names for this plant. In fact, when I got these in stock at the store, where I work, it, um, I can't even remember what was on the invoice. I think it was like green galaxy philodendron or green goddess philodendron. I don't know. It was something not Monstera Peru or not Monstera Carstenianum. But anyway, it just even adds some more illusion to this plant. It makes it even more mysterious. So just a very big fan of this plant. Um, but as for the care, this is a really low maintenance plant in my experience. I don't really find this to dislike most of the lighting that I have in my home. I have rather bright to medium light in most of the spaces in my home because of the light exposure that I have. And this plant lives roughly, I'd say about eight feet away from a southern facing window. And it does have a little bit of supplemented light from a nearby grow light, um, but not a, not a tremendous amount of supplemented light. And this thing has just grown like crazy for me. I've got vines for days everywhere. In fact, I really should consider getting a taller moss pole, but I kind of just like it looking kind of wild and crazy at this point. And I really do like it. Um, so I don't think this plant would love, love low light because uh, I find that if this plant sits in water for too long, you will get some of those lower leaves turn yellow. So I just would be worried in lower light that it would just sit in moist soil for too long because it just wouldn't be able to process that water. So um, in terms of watering though, I do let this plant dry out pretty much completely. Uh, most of my Monsteras I do really let dry out almost all of the way before I go ahead and give them a really good saturation. Um, but this one, if I'm not watering it enough, you'll find these leaves, which are usually quite flat, even though they are have some nice corrugation to them. Their they're, way they stance is quite flat, but um, they will kind of curl back, similar to like how a Syndapsis pictus would react to underwatering. So it's quite vocal when it's not getting enough water, which I really enjoy. And as I previously mentioned, if you're giving it too much water, I'll find some of these lower leaves start to turn yellow and fall off, which is no fun. So it's best to err on underwatering. You could easily propagate this plant just like a standard pothos vine by just cutting it in between two leaves and putting it in water. However, I would say that I have struggled with propagating this plant a lot because it seems like a lot of the nodes on this plant tend to be inactive or they just don't tend to push out roots. So I would recommend submerging at least two, if not three nodes in your potting medium or water or uh, Leca pebbles, whatever you're using to pop propagate your plants, just because I would wanna make sure that you do successfully propagate your plant. And I can say from many experiences that sometimes these nodes, nodes just don't want to take, or maybe it just takes a really long time and I'm just not being patient enough, but I'm, I'm a pretty patient person. So I don't think that would be the case, but um, fertilizing. I do give this plant fertilizer in the spring and summertime. I'm often just using an organic fertilizer in my home, usually bi-weekly, if not monthly, if I'm being a little lazy, but typically bi-weekly. I have had slight pest problems with this plant in the past. I've noticed some thrips here and there, but um, it's easily taken care of. I think it's kind of funny because these leaves are so thick and leathery and typically that's something I don't usually have an issue with, with my plants that have very thick leaves. But because these leaves have so much corrugation to them and places to hide, I feel like that just kind of invites the pest. The pests like what they like, I can't help it. Um, but that's something a quick spray of an insecticidal soap or a spinacid spray could really help out with. Because these leaves are so thick and leathery. I don't think this plant really requires the extra humidity that some of the more rare aeroids tend to appreciate. So I actually grow this one as well as my other Monstera Peru that I've had for even longer than this one in my living room, which does not get supplemented humidity, unlike my bedroom, which is where I keep all my humidity loving plants. Um, and this one just does not seem to mind at all, as you can tell from the way it's just grown for days. So such an incredible plant, sometimes a little elusive at times, um, but it is out there and it is easy enough for you to get your hands on. Not necessarily the most inexpensive plant, not the most expensive plant either, just something to keep in mind, but give it time. If you do buy your plant small, it will grow a tremendous amount. In fact, if you give it a moss pole, like the one that mine is growing on, 
I think that would encourage it to put up even more foliage. So something just to keep in mind. If you have any tips for growing Monstera Peru yourself, I would really love to hear as this is one of my favorite plants to grow. It's just so incredible. So I would really love to hear. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you don't already, follow me on Instagram at Fully Foliage, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you guys in my next video. Have a great time.